Manchester. Hello, I'm Alan Cork. Um, I'm retired after 50 years of work. I've been a carer for a wife who had mental health problems and also a daughter who had the same problems. Um, I've had a long, hard life, very stressful, but also it's been very interesting and very challenging. I had a job as a journalist and um, a business uh, magazine editor where I travelled all over the world. So it wasn't a nine to five job, it was very long hours and very stressful. And during that time I worked for many big publishing houses um, who were quite ruthless and uh, unsympathetic to any personal problems you had at home. <laughs> the, the book is an e-book called The Greater Bad. Um, there's a website that gives more information, www.thegreaterbad.com. It's pure fiction, it's a thriller, a crime thriller. It's also a bit scary, um, and um, it's. And while I say it's fiction, I've obviously been influenced by things that happened to me in real life, and it's about a totally corrupt multinational corporation that um, embraces evil and um, takes over innocent companies and um, gun schmucks, if you like, and um, exploits them and. Um, the title, The Great Bad, is, is a twist on what so many companies, they will say, they will justify something bad by saying, oh, it's all for the greater good. You've got to fall on your sword or you've got to be the scapegoat. It's all for the greater good. And this company has no such pretensions. It actually says it's for the greater bad because they are, um, they are in pursuit of evil and... Um, corruption and um, the profit motive uh, regardless of um, consequences. The um, book is um, about one man who is a, a scapegoat and an innocent who is the anti-hero and how he's put upon and eventually he, he turns and um, he fights back. Partly what inspired me to write it when I retired that um, there were lots of books I used to read as a young man that were very fast moving and they were like adventure stories and, and you'd get halfway through them and you couldn't put them down because they really gripped you and even as a, as a, as a boy my parents would say it's time to go to bed I'd end up taking the torch and the book to bed and reading under the bedclothes because I, just, it, because I wanted to see what was going to happen I'd worked for, for very ruthless um, press barons like Robert Maxwell, who's a name you may know, um, and he was a classic case of a man who had no money and lived on borrowed money, but had all the trappings of wealth, but at the end of the day he, he owned less than the tramp in the street, and it was all a facade that he lived on for years, and got deeper and deeper into debt, until eventually he committed suicide, which is my belief, because he couldn't sustain the lie any longer. Well, I went into journalism because I had an interest in writing. But the writing I did for my living was very technical and scientific and business writing um, um, and factual. Um, but I always wanted to explore the other side of creative writing, in other words, using my imagination um, to invent things. And uh, I think imagination is one of the... Um, most neglected of our senses, you know, and it's just as important as sight and smell and speech and other forms of communication. Because without imagination, we never ever move forward, and things happen because people imagine them because they're, they're not there at the time. People invent new things. If we didn't have imagination, we'd still be living in caves. The new technology of the 21st century has revitalized the publishing market because an e book is instantly available anywhere in the world. If you go to old-fashioned paper and print, printing, which in fact I, I'm still a fan of paper and print, print. If you come to my house, you find bookshelves everywhere. But an e-book is instantly available any, anywhere, and people can just buy it over the computer. If you're in New York, if you're in uh, Bangladesh, or if you're in um, Thailand, and you want to buy a copy of my book, you can buy it in a few seconds and you can be reading it on your Kindle or Amazon Kindle or any of the other applications that people have. And modern technology and computers make everything so much easier. So, for example, if I finished a whole novel and it's about sort of 60,000 words and I said, 
I don't, I don't like the name of that character. I want to change that person's name. It's just so easy to go into the computer and change the name and just automatically does it all the way through. And of course, you could never do that in the old days. It was really hard work and um, really focused your mind on writing. I've tried to do that. And also, I've tried to make a story that's never predictable. It's got lots of um, surprises and shocks and it's never quite clear um, which direction it's going to go in and it's never the obvious one. Well, I, I wrote the book basically to entertain people and while it's a very dark and violent story and an evil story, I've tried to also um, make it a bit uplifting as well because the, the anti-hero, if you like, is... is um, never corrupted by all the things that go on around him. He's always, um, he might be weak, but he's always a good guy. And, um, and he always, um, even though the odds are always against him, he has a conscience in the things he won't do. And um, even some of the people that are really evil have a conscience and suddenly back off. And I think, um, you know, that, that life is full of surprises and... Um, you never know what's around the corner. And um, I remember seeing an IRA bomb going off in the 1990s at London Bridge Station. And you think, well, you know, this is the day I could have died. Um, and so each day you set out in the morning, you never know what, if it's going to be another routine day, or this could be the day when everything changes forever. Um, and I think, in a way, that's what um, novels are all about. It's trying to give people escapism and also want to give people some fun as well and some pleasure um, as well as scaring them so. <laughs> okay. I'm halfway through a prequel which is um, set in the time before the greater bad um, which explains how a lot of things happened and came about and a bit more about the, the growth of the conglomerate and um, a bit more about the, its, its long history um, Yes, I'm a, I'm a very old-fashioned um, journalist and writer and I still prefer paper and print and I love the smell of books and my house is full of bookshelves, full of books. But obviously the, the um, modern e-books are the way of the future in the 21st century. I mean, I have an Amazon Kindle here, which is what my book is published on, and um, I've got 50 books in there. But in fact, if I wanted to, I could have over a 1,000 books in there. So it's very much the way of the future. It's instant books available anywhere and very readable and readable in the garden on the beach or whatever uh, just don't get it wet <laughs> you can find them a lot more information about the greater bad plus some sample chapters to read on the website which is www.thegreaterbad.com greater bad all one word <laughs>